Hey, Flooring Pros, this is Jerry Levinson, and this is the Flooring Business Podcast, where each week we bring you content that's marketing, sales, anything that I think is going to help you grow and succeed and profit now in your flooring business. So I'm going to do something a little bit different this week, and I have a guest, and we're going to talk about marketing. We're going to talk about your website, a little frustration of mine, uh, where a lot of people, man, that website's just not working for you. You know, you're frustrated with it. You know, so let's talk about why you're burning through cash on your ineffective website and what you and your web company should do about it. So let me be clear. I'm not pitching website services. This is not nothing to do with me selling a website or even making a recommendation for somebody else. So I'll tell you what you could do for your company and how you should be working with your current web company. Maybe you need to fire them. We'll discuss that too and how you go about that. All right, so I'm getting quotes all the time from customers. I'm seeing it in their forum, the flooring dealer forum, that I'm spending 800 bucks a month and I'm getting nothing in return. We haven't gotten a lead in three, four months. Um, I've spent 2,300 a month for the past couple of months and all I get are bad leads. People are getting uh, leads for people that want the cheapest stuff or carpet cleaning or you know things that don't go along with their business. And they're like, why am I wasting all this money on leads that... Th these aren't good customers. They're not good leads. Um, so, and the problem is not the price that you're paying. Uh, the cost of advertising is determined by its effectiveness, not the price. So that's a quote I made up years ago because I've always believed that there is no such thing as expensive advertising. Expensive advertising, it becomes expensive when it doesn't work. If it works, it doesn't matter what the price is that you're paying because you're getting a good return on your investment. So I've always found that the worst advertising was usually the cheapest advertising because it was very ineffective. So, and that's part of the challenge that you're having with the website. And we'll go over that now. So, well, let's talk about some of the basic stuff first. So the first problem that you have is the de design and navigation of your website on desktop or mobile phone. Um, when you go to your website, is it easy for customers to do business with you? Okay. These people don't know about flooring. They need words. They need lingos. They need things that are easy. First, is it easy for them to see your phone number? Can they pick up the phone and give you guys a call? Second, the address. If you have a showroom, that address should be a clickable link, okay, that they can see the address because most people know where you're located because they're familiar with their town. So, They'll get an idea, they'll see your address, and they'll click on it. That should go right to Google Maps and, and be able to take them right to your house, right to their house. The request for an estimate, it should be in a shadow box and really easy to find. You know, that should be one of the most recognizable things on your website, easy to find, and it should lead people to request an in-home estimate. I'm not a big fan of the whole contact us button because... You know, if they want to contact you, if they want a conversation, more than likely they're going to call you. Um, if they're looking for email or text conversation, that's a little bit different. Some of you that have that little text thing on the bottom, that does work really good. You got to learn how to handle those text messages too. It's not the normal conversation that you have when somebody calls you. So that's something that we teach our customers is, well, done it everywhere. Teach you how to handle a digital conversation uh, when it's either through text message or Facebook. Look, if you don't um, have a showroom and all you do is in-home estimates, I've, I've got clients that all they do is in-home estimates and it doesn't say it on their website. It's like, good God, you know, if, if that's all you're doing, then you need to have maybe an image of your vehicle on your website. You know, if you don't have your vehicle wrapped, then just get a mock-up wrap and put that on your website. It doesn't have to be your specific vehicle, but you can make up a mock-up, put that on your website for now until someday you do get your vehicle wrapped. But it should be really clear. Hey, we do free and home estimates. You know, we come out to the house, free and home consultation. If that's what you're doing, that's how you're running your business, then really hammer it down, emphasize that point, drive people right to that part of your website. The navigation bar should be super simple. Some of your navigation bars just make no sense. 
Okay. You need to hit customers between the eyes, make it easy for them. Um, so this is one navigation bar I saw it's products, services. This is a funny thing. So when people come to your site, let's say they're looking for carpet. I'm looking for carpet. I'm not looking for products. I don't think about car products. Um, same thing. If I'm looking for hardwood flooring, I'd rather see hardwood flooring services. I don't know why we have a service bar in, in our website. It's people are looking for flooring and they'll relate that with the installation. They don't think about it as a service. They think about it as a product. So, you know, hit them between the eyes with what they're looking for. So reviews is good. It doesn't need to live in the bar there. There could be something else on the side that show reviews. That's powerful. Financing too. Um, sometimes that's important. It's not uh, inspiration. Um, I, I like gallery better than inspiration. I think inspiration kind of, you got to think about that. And, you know, there's this uh, Hemingway app I love using when I'm writing content. Hemingway app shows you how to write at a fifth grade level because that's how people read at a fifth grade level. Don't try to get fancy with your, your content, your lingo that you use. Make it simple for people to understand what it is that they're looking for. Uh, the About Us about us page works good from what I've heard. It, it's a good page. Um, a lot of you have a horrible about us page because it says, you know, at ABC Flooring, we believe in providing our customers with the best service and uh, products in the industry. <laughs> it's like everybody says the same damn thing. You know, if you do have an about us, it's, it's not necessary to have an about us page. Um, but if you do have an about us page, you know, make it about you. Talk about why you move in that area, why you got into the flooring business, what you like to do for hobbies. You know, that's a place for you to make a connection that's different. Uh, the contact. I, look, I, I think contact is obvious. If they want to contact you, they'll call you. I don't know if they're look, how many people are really looking for an email conversation. I could be wrong about this, but uh, I, I'm not a big fan of the contact request a consultation. That's what I want. You know, I want the in-home estimate. We, we're ready to take action. We're leading people to take action, you know, contact. What, what information are they going to ask you that they can't really find on your website? Um, if there is information they want to ask you that they can't find on your website, that should probably be in your navigation bar and it should be on your website. Uh, one of the most popular things is pricing. Uh, everybody's so damn afraid of uh, putting pricing up there. Well, because you know, I want people to come into my store. I don't want to give them pricing. So let me ask you a question. If you go to a website and it doesn't have the information that you are looking for, do you feel compelled to go visit that store? Do you're like, oh, darn it. I didn't get the information I want. Now I'm going to have to drive down there and go in there. Or now I'm going to have to give them a call. Or are you going to go to a different website until you start finding the information that you were looking for? Why would you not give people information that they want? Don't be afraid of it. They're just looking for information. They're not comparing prices. They're trying to get an idea of what this costs because they, they don't know. Everybody should have some sort of pricing page on their website, but that would be you know, a very, very useful tool. It'll be one of the most, the absolute most visited pages on your website. You know, wouldn't you like everybody to go to one spot where man it's going to kick ass and they're going to you you could leave marketing messages there sales specials you can give them advice about buying flooring you've got you've captured an attentive audience and now what are you going to say to them you know it's a great place for you to pitch your products and service um one of the biggest mistakes i see making uh what, we've got a company in town express flooring they're a lot like empire and they're offering pricing. It, it's fantastic. You go on Facebook, um, you can request pricing for flooring. And they ask you, what kind of flooring are you interested in? What kind of flooring are you going to be taking up? Do you have furniture to move? Is there anything else we need to know about your project? Baseboards or do we have to move toilets or any, anything like that? It asks you all these details and questions and you think you're going to get a price? No, they, get, they start harassing you right away. So they, they lead you in with very, very good marketing. 
And then they piss you off because all they're trying to do is get the in-home estimate and it's not sincere. It's not honest and shame on them for doing it that way. It's just a really, really sleazy business practice that they have. And I think it's ineffective too. You know, forget it being sleazy. It's they're pissing people off, which is good for us. You know, I love it when my competition does shitty things that that piss off customers. So they'll want to do business with me instead at any price. No, that's a great thing to have. So <laughs> I love the empires of the world. You know, this is one of the biggest growing companies in our industry. The guy knows nothing about flooring. He knows about marketing and selling. So, oh, good Lord. I got to turn this thing off. Go away. Series interrupting our conversation here. Um, so this company, um, it, it's retro flooring. And I pulled this off of his website. Okay, so you go to his website. Are you interested? He doesn't sell carpet. Are you interested in hardwood, luxury vinyl, or laminate? That's why they're going to his website. He hits them between the eyes. He makes it easy for them. You know, it, it's like, this does not have to be that hard. He doesn't have all these other navigation tools and everything. You know, why not serve up exactly what people are looking for and make life easy for them? Why are we making it complicated with all these options? You know, none of us like options. You go to in and out Burger, you got three choices, you know, four choices. You know, you go to IHOP and the menu has 50 items on it. It's hard to make up a decision. But you go to Chick-fil-A, super easy to make a decision. One of the biggest mistakes McDonald's made is expanding that menu. In the beginning, they were about simplicity and they did a ton of business just on very, very simple menu items and made it easy for people to go in and make a buying decision. Okay. So this is my son's website. The cover photo should have people in them. Um, you know, the studies show that people look at photos, like if you're looking at vacation photos, you'll look at a photo with somebody in it more than uh, just a photo of a beautiful background. Okay, you'll take more time looking at that photo. So your cover photo on your website should have, this is a great photo because, you know, it shows the carpet, shows the samples. It's clear. I mean, I'm in the right place. I'm shopping for carpet or I'm shopping for flooring. It's clear to me that, man, I've hit the right place. Okay, I don't have to figure it out with something clever or fancy that doesn't make any sense. Those are just some simple things that your website should have. And hopefully you've got a good web company that's doing those things for you. Um, if not, then you're going to have to instruct it to do it for themselves. Uh, so, look, I'm sorry, these web companies aren't very good. I'm going to say it. Um, and I don't care which web company it is. I, don't, I have web companies that I recommend that I think you should use. And I'll give you those recommendations if you ask. But by and large, I haven't seen a web company do a really good job, um, at especially this part of it. They don't give you good information and they don't give you good advice. So, and it's not because they're bad and it's not because they're evil or it's not because they're trying to get money out of you. Um, it's because they, honestly, they just don't know how. They don't know how to sell marketing to you. So let's talk first about pay-per-click uh, Google advertising. So, and why it's so ineffective for small business owners. And most of this thing is, is dealing with business owners that are under two, $3 million. Um, when you're going over four or five, you're growing your company, you're getting over 5 million, you're spending a lot more money. You're a lot savvier when it comes to a lot of the marketings your your advertising dollars go a lot further for you. This is really for the small guys that are, you know, under $3 million a year. And you're trying to get the most out of your marketing budget because you don't have a lot to spend. Uh, and and th these are the questions that they ask you. And it just ticks me off because they're really, really bad questions. Uh, first question is, what's your budget? None of us have a budget for marketing. I'm sorry, it's, you know, a 101 business. What's your marketing budget? Everybody should have a marketing budget. None of us have a marketing budget. Look, when people come in to buy flooring, they don't have a budget for their flooring. 
So asking people a question that they don't know the answer to is a really big mistake. Um, maybe if they want to ask that question, say, do you have a budget or are you trying to get an idea what this costs? Um, so they also, next question, what keywords would you like us to focus on? You know, really, you don't have a strategy or a plan. You you want me to tell you what you, how you should do your job. Is it really up to you guys to tell them which keywords work best and and how the money should be distributed? I mean, that's insane. Do your goddamn job and instruct your your people, your customer on best practices. And again, they don't do it because they don't know how to. Um, what areas would you like us to cover? Like what territories, what city, what zip codes, which areas? Well, you know your business better than anyone. God, I hate it when people say that. You know, you know your business better than any of it's such a cop out. It it means I'm too damn incompetent to give you good advice and good instruction. You know, you know your business. You think that's a compliment. It's not. It's saying that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So I'm looking on your guidance. So I can help you, you know, do the marketing that you want. They don't want to do marketing to help you grow your business. They want to do marketing that you're going to like. They want you to give them the instruction and they want to follow your lead. And then when it's not working, they're going to come back and say, well, that's what you wanted us to do. It's because these guys aren't giving you good advice. They're not giving you good instruction. So if I was in their shoes, this is how pay-per-click advertising should be sold. First of all, you should be given good advice on how much to spend and how to spend it. Exactly. Specific packages, good advice. And then the so-called marketing experts, the reason that they don't do it, I said this before, is they don't have the courage to do that and they don't have the wisdom to do that. Okay. And a lot of these guys are going to come back and, and call me all sorts of names and say, screw me. Well, I don't care. You know, uh, I want you guys to do well. I want my flooring dealer people to do well, you know, and you're only going to do well if you have good marketing that attracts customers. So this is like vitally important. All right. So the right, right way for you to do it. If I'm working with a customer, I say your minimum budget is $1,500 for pay-per-click. Um, and a uh, little side note, you're still paying whatever that web service is. So if somebody's charging you $600 a month or $800 a month to host and, and do your website, three, 400, I don't care what the amount is um, that they sold you on. And I don't think anybody's ripping you off or charging you too much. What I find is most of these web companies aren't charging enough because uh, they're trying to do things for you cheap rather than try to do things for you effectively. They're not serving you well by not giving you the things that you need. All right. So you should your budget should be at least a minimum 1500 a month. Okay. If you can't do 1500 a month, that's okay. Don't do pay-per-click advertising. All right. Don't spend $800 a month. If all you can afford is 800, then this is the wrong place to put your money. Your, your money is not going to go far enough. Unless you can do a minimum of $1,500, your money will not go far enough for you. So don't even bother with it. Okay. Now you're going to spend it on one keyword category at a time. All right. The first keyword category is carpet and carpet installation. So the category is carpet. So anything that encompasses carpet. I don't know if carpet tear out is a keyword or... You know, I, I don't think you want that. I think mostly you want carpet, carpet installation, and that's it, okay? Let's say you don't sell carpet, um, then, then you're going to do whatever it is you sell the most. If the most of what you sell is hardwood, engineered flooring, you know, hardwood is, I call that a boutique product. The nice thing about hardwood is it's not as expensive of a keyword because there's not as many people searching for hardwood or engineered wood as there is for carpet. So $1,500 is a really healthy budget for specifically hardwood. Um, that might include sand and refinish. Uh, so whatever those keywords are that people are, are typing up for that very specific category, that's what you want to focus on, okay? And focus that budget like a laser. 
you know, okay? Don't water it down. Um, I hate the keyword vinyl. Uh, use laminate instead. I never sold laminate and well, we sold a little bit of it, not very much. We sold Revwood. I wish we would have sold more. It's a fantastic product. Um, but I advertised the hell out of laminate. And when people came in, we sold them luxury vinyl. Uh, does that matter? Did we mislead anybody? No. Uh, nobody knew the, the search term luxury vinyl. There's some um, problems with the luxury vinyl category. Uh, the biggest problem being that vinyl is used in other industries. There's vinyl siding, there's vinyl when you're doing upholstery. So there's a lot of other industries that share the word vinyl. So vinyl can get watered down. You can attract bad leads with vinyl. So if your pay-per-click is really good with vinyl, it might be vinyl flooring even, it's still going to be more expensive and then you're going to attract leads that have nothing to do with flooring. So people are going to accidentally click on your website. All right. So I'd stay away from the vinyl keyword category. Uh, and again, where people may disagree with me, uh, you've got experts in here. you got people spending thousands of dollars that may disagree with me. I'm not talking to them. Okay. They've got the budget. They're spending 15, 20 grand a month. All right. You're going to be buying all these category keywords. I'm talking about the smaller dealer here who doesn't have a huge budget in advertising. Okay. Um, don't spend your money on flooring as a keyword. Again, people are usually very specific about their search. They know what type of flooring they're looking for. Maybe they're looking for waterproof wood flooring, or um, they're not usually typing in flooring as much, but flooring can get watered down and be expensive. It's not going to be as effective for you. Now, are there people searching for flooring? Yeah, absolutely. But I'll tell you, I, in my town in Phoenix, we were spending uh, back in the earlier days about four or five grand. And I narrowly focused on carpet and, and carpet installation. And we were number one and two position on those keywords. So we crushed it when it came to carpet. On the other flooring categories, we didn't do as well. We didn't score as well or rank as well, but that was okay. My business was growing fast. You know, we were doing a lot of business in one category and very effectively. Had I watered that down, I wouldn't have gotten more customers. I would have gotten less of each customer. And I would have been competing against Empire, Home Depot, and everybody else. You know, a dirty little secret, Empire is spending thousands and thousands of dollars on carpet now. So, and th this is what I loved in the past. People thought everyone's getting away from carpet. So it was an inexpensive keyword to promote. Now that Empire is spending a lot of money on carpet, you're going to start seeing that keyword go up, the, the uh, cost per click go up. So here's something that costs you no nothing. <laughs> Schedule a monthly meeting with your web company. You got to go over the analytics with them. You're not going to understand what they're saying. It doesn't matter. They will be explaining it to you, believing that you understand and they'll look at things like uh, we did worse this month than you did last month. Oh, let me make some adjustments here. You guys will have conversations about things, about how you can make it better. You'll make some changes. Don't trust your web company. And it's not because they're not trustworthy. They're human beings. If you're not seeing them every month, I'm sorry, they don't give a shit about you. They're not going to do the work for you that they will do if you're seeing them every month and holding them accountable. And it's not that they don't love you as customers and they don't value you, but a lot of the mistake that most companies make is you hire a web company, you hear good things about them, they're very popular, they're all over the place. So you trust them, you trust they're gonna do a good job because man, they're good at selling what they do. But if you don't hold them accountable, if you don't have that monthly meeting with them, and don't feel like you're bugging them. You set a meeting for one hour, the second Tuesday of every month. You know, pick a day and a time and put it in the calendar for infinity, okay? You need to do that every month. It's too important. It's the most important thing to your business is the marketing because you are in the business of attracting customers. And this website is the lifeblood of your business. So... 
learn a little bit about the websites and how marketing works. You know, story for my success is the marketing. I am not a flooring guy. I got into this business with knowing nothing about flooring. Um, the people I know who are moving the fastest, um, I got one client doing six million a year in his third year. He knows nothing about flooring. He knows about marketing and he knows about sales. And he's a one trick pony, only selling luxury vinyl. Uh, same thing with Brian Elias uh, at Refloor. The guy's doing 30 million a year in his second or third year because he's an expert when it comes to marketing and sales. Okay, created sales presentations. They give a lifetime guarantee for the install and, and for the product. And they've got nothing but five star reviews. So, you know, the ones that are experts at flooring are having a more difficult time moving slow. Uh, they're moving slower. I was in the same boat. I was an expert in window coverings. I was the smartest guy in my town when it came to blinds and shutters. And, and then this company opened up. I can't even remember the name now, but they started running circles around me. Their ads were everywhere. They were getting business. They were selling Hunter Douglas. They were kicking my ass up and down the street, you know, and their prices weren't better. They weren't more knowledgeable than me. They just knew more about some of these business things, about how to hire people, about how to do marketing, about how to do sales properly. You know, So it wasn't until 2009 when the economy kicked my ass where I thought, man, if I really understood how to run a business, I could probably do a better job. So I started learning about marketing and sales. And I realized how much my knowledge about the product was holding me back and i was so focused on the product rather than focused on my customer and focused on the things that really grow my business and it starts with the marketing this is a no-brainer do retargeting most people call it charge two three hundred bucks a month it's one of the most cost effective things that you can do and what retargeting is is somebody came to your web website they visited you so now they're going to see your ads on facebook they'll see your ads um, when they do Google searches, if they look at news, they'll start seeing banner ads and things like that uh, for your company. So it'll seem like, man, these guys are everywhere. That's why things work so well for Empire is these guys are everywhere. They saturate the market with advertising, so they become a trusted resource. Uh, let me be real clear. The, their sales and specials, 50% off, this and that or free installation, none of those gimmicks work. What works is that they are in your face all the time. It's easy to call them, easy to do business with them. So that's why they're attracting customers. So it's not the sales and the specials. The sales and the specials are good eye candy for ads. So I'm not saying don't do them. I'm just saying don't copy those guys believing that, that, that their specific sales are working. It's not about their sales. It's about the frequency of advertising. And mostly they use a lot of retargeting to hit the same people that have seen their ads, visited their website. It's like, okay, Google or however this works, they put a cookie on your site and they serve up more of the same ads uh, that you were looking for. Annoying as a consumer, great as a business person. So... Look, there's a lot of other improvements that you can make, but start with these and do it immediately. If your web company doesn't work with you, then fire them. I don't care if you're under contract. You're going to keep paying a web company that's ineffective for the remainder of your contract if they're not returning calls and they're not making the adjustments and the changes and you're not getting the service you need. You know, that would be like, uh, your car's out of oil, but I'm not due for an oil change for another two months. So I'm going to wait until it's due for an oil change. Meanwhile, I'm just going to park the car over here. You know, you wouldn't do that. You go spend the money on oil and put it in your car. It's the same thing. If you don't, <laughs> if you're not getting business from your website and you're calling them, you're being fair, you're asking them, you're requesting them to make changes, I'm sorry, you got to cancel a contract, cancel your damn contract, okay? If you got to go to war, go to war. This is your business. You know, nobody cares about it more than you do. So 
the website's one of the most important tools in your business. And so if you cancel your contract early and you have to continue paying on it, fine. You know, launch another one. It's going to take a month or two to get another website up and running. So find out what that is, get that going. And when that website's up and running, go ahead and cancel the other website. You can change domain names a little bit. Um, it's not going to hurt you. All the reputation, things you built up. Uh, if, if they're moving too slow and they're not doing a good job, fire their ass, you know? Okay, you need somebody to do a good job for you. Guys, if you want to book a marketing review and go over it, uh, go to pm4fd.com. I can review your business and your marketing plan. Just request a free one-on-one -on -one consultation. And let's look at ways that you can profit now in the flooring industry.